So what we're going to do today is we're going to finally put it all together. We've been talking about the mechanics of the mathematics and being able to answer these questions. But today what we want to do is we want to go back and look at those same problems and be able to talk about how you would answer the questions. Okay? It's really important that you take the process seriously and understand the four things that you need to be able to do in order to answer these questions properly for the exam. Because remember, stats is not really about the mechanics of the mathematics as much as it is about understanding or using mathematics to understand the world around you. Now, I granted that these problems are probably a little convoluted. You're not really interested in the average life of a light bulb, but uh, these are, are still experiences that will guide you toward being able to use math to understand your world, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about the four-step process for answering these questions fully. Again, all we've focused on so far is just the math. Now we need to talk about how to put it all together, okay? So, is always going to be draw the diagram. You need to be able to tell where the information falls on the normal curve. So remember, the diagram is just the normal curve. The line in the middle is the mean. We have three standard deviations either side of it. You can, and it's a sketch, so they don't have to be perfect, right? One, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. And of course, you'll have actual numbers in those, number values in those. But I do want you to keep in mind this, this standard one, this uh, template, if you will, because we're going to be using it quite soon too. All right? So remember then, once you've drawn the diagram, you, you want to then shade the area in question. So for example, if I wanted to find out the probability that my number is bigger than one, for example, then I would simply shade everywhere the number is bigger than one. Oops, sorry. Right? Shade the area where it's bigger than one. And that gives you a visual. And again, um, you may not see it so much because you're, we're using the calculator to com compute the probabilities, but you will see it as we move forward. So make sure that you really understand how to shade and where, where to shade, okay? Let's get rid of that shading so that we can move on to the next piece. All right, now, the second step is what I've just done here. And that is to write the probability statement. Now, this is a big deal. If you do not write the probability statement, no matter what numbers, whatever them, other numbers you get, get right, you will not get the question right, okay? So you have to be able to write the probability statement for an event. And by probability statement, I mean this thing, P of, right? And then you have in parentheses what it is you're measuring. This one says the probability that X is greater than one. Uh, you could have the probability that X, well, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do, that, uh, X is bigger than three, but less than seven, right? So you can have different probability statements depending on the values. This one gives you a lower limit of three and an upper limit of seven, right? X is greater than one, that's a lower limit of one. So we've been thinking about these numbers, but we've been thinking about them as, in, and, as limits. But they also are the numbers that you're going to use for your probability statements, okay? 
The third step is to simply calculate the probability. And that is where we've been working so far by just putting those numbers, in, the right numbers in the right order in the, in the calculator and then, and then finding out what our probability is, okay? And remember, we've been doing that to four decimal places. Okay. Now, four decimal places, but you need to be careful because four decimal places or a percent. Some questions are asking you to, to, to do it as a percent. Remember, to find a percent, you just multiply the decimal times 100. Put on the percent symbol, so times 100%. Okay. So be careful the way, about the way they ask you to answer the question. And then finally, the fourth and final pro part of this process is to write your answer as a sentence in context. And that's the one that will bump you up or take you down, okay? So we have two big ones, writing the probability statement and then writing your answer. The mathematics, as you can imagine, punching things into the calculator is fairly easy. But being able to understand what it is that you're doing is the key here, and that's, and that's the focus of, of this particular probability section. So being able to write your answer as a sentence in context is critical. So in other words, when we're talking about those birds, right, how many birds lived past a certain age, you need to be able to say 35% of all the birds in the study lived past 95 years or something. We're going to look at some examples. Actually, we're going to look at those very examples that we've been working with so that you can write, be able to write your answer as a sentence and in context. Now, I don't expect your sentences to be identical. It's never going to happen. But I do expect a certain amount of information in everyone's sentence. Okay? How does that look? Good. Pretty, pretty, pretty much what you expected because you know... <laughs> But it's never good enough to have a number for an answer. That's never going never gonna to happen for us. We're always going to have to explain what those numbers mean, right? And that's where we want to put it all together. Okay. So we're going to take a look at a few of those. Um, we're just going to look at one problem, go through the entire thing, doing exactly this. And then what I want to do is I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about a tool on your calculator um, because you're going to have to solve some equations and I want you to know that you can use the equation solver, the solver, on your calculator if, you, if you'd like. You don't have to do them by hand, and so we're going to talk about that. But first, we're going to look at, these, uh, at solving some of these problems. And again, these are going to be very familiar to you. I'm using the same problems over and over because I need for you to understand the details here. It's not about doing lots of different kinds of problems. It's making sure that you can do the problems that we that are presented completely. Okay? All right. So let's go to those and take a look at it. Keep in mind these four steps, the things that we're going to do. Okay. So here we go. Here are the four steps from the book. Draw the picture. There you see the picture. They've got the mean and the appropriate numbers. They've shaded the area that they want, okay, which this area is between 3.3 and something over here, a little above 3.9. Who knows what that number is? Then, uh, so four is what that number is that's given to you here. They calculated the Z value. Now, remember, you don't have to calculate the Z value and look up the tables. You, what, you, what you will do here is you will write a probability statement Okay, and you will state your answer as a sentence and in context. Okay, 
So step two and three are slightly different because we're not using the z-values because we're not doing the tables, okay? And we don't have to look up from the tables to find the probability. We're using our calculators. Now, if you want to use those tables, you're more than welcome to, but I, um, we're going to be using your calculators for everything else, so I don't see the point, really, okay? All right, so let's just go down to our favorites, the birds, because they give us every possible piece of this. Sorry. Okay, here we go. The estimated lifespan of a kakapo, the kakapo is a rare New Zealand ground living parrot, is 95 years. If the lifespans are normally distributed with a standard deviation of 11 years, and then they start give us, giving us some questions, okay? So, we've been using just the math to find these. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take it piece by piece. And our first step, of course, is to draw the, the curve, okay? So you'll have your normal curve, and it doesn't matter. It can be a little wonky like mine is. It's fine. And it says the average lifespan, so average is the mean, is 95 years. So our mean is 95 years. There are three standard deviations either side. Okay. Now you have calculators handy, so I'm going to have you do the math, please. And remember, you only have to draw this one time. And my advice would be, if you want to draw this, draw it out in, in ink and then do some shading in pencil, so that lightly in, in pencil, so that you can use the same one over and over again. Or you can simply draw it again. Once you have it, it's no big deal. Okay? Now, with a standard deviation of 11 years, that means as we go to the right, we're going to add 11 years to the 95. As we go to the left, we're going to subtract 11 years. Okay? So, who has these numbers for me or who wants to give me these numbers? 95 plus 11, gonna give me 106, right? Plus another 11, 117. Pretty good when I'm adding, but when I get to the subtraction, that's when I'm gonna fall apart, okay? <laughs> then we add 11 more, we get 128. Everybody agree? I hope. Now, we'll start subtracting. So that's gonna give me 84. Then it's gonna give me 83. I'm sorry, 73, good grief. See, I told you. And then 62. Now be neater than mine. Mine's pretty cramped up there. You can make this a little larger. But does everybody see where I got those numbers? I need some verbal yeses, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Okay. Now, we're going to just do A so you can see every part of it, right? And then you're going to go back because you've already done the math for these. I want you to get to do all the other steps now. Okay. We need a probability statement. Again, you don't write that, you don't get achieved. Okay. Okay, it's as clear, it's even, it's as, it's as basic as that, all right? So we are looking for the probability that it lives to more than 120 years old. So the probability that X is more than 120 years old. You don't need to put in the units when you're doing that because if you look at our, at our normal curve, we're only talking about the numbers, right? But you must put in this statement, okay? It's gotta be part of your answer and you're working or your question is wrong. Now leave a space here because that's where we're gonna put our answer, our number, our numerical answer, okay? So let's go back over here and shade the area where that's going to happen, okay? So 120, who knows where that is, but it's somewhere in there, All right? It's bigger than one, bigger than 117, less than 128, so it's somewhere in there. The exact. 
I beg your pardon? The shading doesn't have to be, like, good. No, because it just has to be accurate as far as where it should be. It doesn't have to be um, perfectly at 120 because there's no way for you to know where 120 actually is. Okay? So, yes, you're exactly right. So, just shade the general area. Now, it would be a problem if you started your shading here between 106 and 117, right? So, you have to be at least accurate enough to get it in the right spot, but it doesn't have to be perfect. You, it, it, as a matter of fact, it simply can't be. Okay? Good question. Excellent. Okay? Now, so that means that this 120 is the bottom of the data that we're looking for, right? So that means it is our which limit? If it's the bottom number I'm looking for, it's the lower, lower limit. The lower limit. There you go. Okay? So our lower limit is 120. Our upper limit it just goes on forever, right? So, because we're using the calculator, we're simply going to use some big number. I like five nines, you could use 10 with a bunch of zeros after it, whatever you like, I don't know. The nines to me simply make it clear that I'm making up some big number to go on forever, <laughs> but it's up to you. We also need to know the standard deviation. Remember, these are the four pieces we're gonna put into our, uh, into our calculator, which is 11, and we need to know the mean, which in this case was 95. Now notice I haven't put any years in there, units for that, because these are just numbers that I'm going to put in. Once I get my answer, it's going to have units in it, and then your sentence will have units in it, okay? But when you're making this list of numbers to punch into your calculator, you don't need them. All right, now, <clears throat> unfortunately, when I click on to do the calculator business, okay, as a matter of fact, I'm just not going to, I'm gonna get y'all to, because if I click over, to, it's gonna make all of this disappear and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to put in, go to your, go to your you should be very familiar with that, with that space you're going to now, make sure it's on variable. Your lower limit, you're gonna put in 120. Your upper limit, you're gonna put in a bunch of nines. Standard deviation is 11. The, the uh, uh, mean, I'm sorry, is 95. And if you plug all of that in, you're gonna get some big decimal. What decimal are you gonna get, someone? 0 0.0115231. Okay, try that one more time. Sorry, some, yeah, 0. Do you want four decimal places? Uh, you could take it out all the way and then we'll, and we'll do four decimal places. Uh -huh. 0 0.0115231. Okay, does everyone agree with her? Hopefully others of you pushed this in or you've done it before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're all happy. I just need to make sure. Okay. Now, we want them normally, we would round this to four decimal places, right? So one, two, three, four is right there. Because the number after it is a 2, that means this one is not going to round up. It's going to round down. So those are just going to go away. But if you look at this, they want it as a percentage. And to get a percentage, we simply multiply by 100%. Now, it isn't always a percentage, but this particular time, they do want a percentage. And if it asks for a percentage and you don't give it, it's a problem, okay? Now, I mean, a problem all the way that, that, that some of them, if you don't give a percent, that, and it's just an achieved question, it's not achieved, okay? So read very carefully. Well, multiplying that times 100 is simply gonna move that over a couple places, so 1.15%. You can still use the same amount of decimal places or, or when you multiply that out, so, okay? Now, Mr. Sal? Yes? Um, when you times that number, do you need to use the full number from the calculator or the one for four decimal places? Um, it's fine if you have these rounded. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, okay. I would round to four decimal places and then do the, then times 100%. It's, 
it's fine. Because in the back of the book, um, and I did send you guys the answers again. Some of you are saying you didn't have the, the solutions for these, so now you, you should. Um, in the back of the book, it says 1.15%. So they rounded it to four decimal places and then got the, and then with the percent symbol. So the, the four decimal places is pretty much the rule. Okay? Now, they also give the Z values in the back of the book. We're not worried about the Z values because we're using the calculator. Okay, so don't worry that you don't have a Z value there. That's so that you could read it from the chart. We're not reading from the chart. We're using the calculator, okay? All right, well, that answers that question. So the probability that X is greater than 120 as a percentage is 1.15%. Okay, is that a very big number? Mm, not really, right? Okay, now this one, all they're all asking you for is the percentages. But I want you to think of every one of these as a sentence because you need to get used to writing a sentence saying, using the information given, okay? So listen to the sentence that I would t say about this. The percentage of cockapoo that live more than 120 years old is approximately 1.15%. Okay? I can write that out if you want me to. The percentage, and I'm going to abbreviate a little bit, of cockapoo that live to more then 120 years old is approximately 1.15%. Couple of things I want to say here. You've got to have the who, what, when, and where. All right? So, we're looking for a percentage of these particular birds. And what is it they're doing? And here's our answer. But notice one word in there that is critical. Okay. It's dangerous to say is equals. Remember, statistics is not like that. We've done enough papers and statistics to know that we that with with different value with slightly different information these this could change now these are more mathematically derived than anything we've done so far i agree with you on that but you would still say about approximately mm -hmm. could be expected to give these clarifiers okay if you don't <laughs> then you are say, stating a fact that might not be true, right? Because do we know that it's exactly 1.15% 1, 1. of those birds? No, absolutely not. Do we know that, did, did we raise every cockapoo and be able to see exactly how long they lived? No, absolutely no way, right? Okay. Do we know that it's exactly 11 years? No way. So. We're, so we're taking liberties with the numbers, using numbers that we've gathered, right, to be able to answer the questions. Okay? And that's the four-step process. Right? So first step is to draw second, the, the curve. The second step is to write the probability statement. Third step is to calculate and make sure, are you looking for a number or a percent? Be careful. And then fourth, write out your sentence. And it needs to be a complete sentence in context. Okay? We're talking about lifespan. If you don't mention lifespan or, or, the, the, or the, how long they live, then you're in trouble. <laughs> We're talking about these, this specific type of parrots. If you don't write out that specific type of parrot, you're in trouble. Okay, the measurement is in percentages, more than 120 years old, that's got to be there, and then what is our probability?
Sound good? Okay. So, yeah. Okay, if you can do that, and yeah. that's pretty straightforward because we've been working on the math. If you can do that, then that's a merit paper stamped out for you right there. Okay? <laughs> and you're going to see that this sentence, this type of sentence, this type of probability sentence is going to be used across the board because we're going to look at other ways of finding probabilities later. We're not only talking about normal distribution, we'll be talking about probability trees and probability and two-way tables, etc. That sentence stays constant through the through, uh, through the process. Okay? So as well as the the probability statement that stays constant. The way you find the probability will change depending on the information you're given, but the 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 statement and the sentence are constants throughout the, the this partic particular assessment area. Okay? All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to go back because you've done these problems. I want you now just to go back and write out a sentence for each one of these that you did. Just those mixing it up ones, just those last ones. Now, again, you can go if you want to. You can work some more problems from the, the if, you're, if you're still shaky on the calculator stuff, then I need you to not be. So go back and do the, and do the calculator stuff on on some of the previous problems that we worked on, but for right now, I want you to get I want you to get used to writing these sentences. It is that critical, as well as the probability statements. Okay, neither one of those things will be in the back of the book, right? Some of them are going to have um, uh, sentences, but it's usually only the last sentence that the last part of the question that they ask you about the sentence. I want you to write a sentence for every single one of them. And then we, we will go over them and talk about them so that we know, right? So what I'm going to have you do is uh, we can either read them out and, and we can judge, judge them together um, or whatever you want to do, but we, we want them. So I want this done for the next time we meet, okay? So have a probability statement. What is it you're measuring the probability of? And have a sentence for every one of those. Um, that was that on pages 34 through 37, 1 through 4. So it's not a huge number of them. Okay? Does that sound doable? Because we need, because uh, I've been going kind of slow now, but now I need to kind of kick it up. So now we, uh, now that we're, we've got all the pieces put together, we can move a little faster. Not super fast, but faster. Okay? All right. So I'm going to stop the recording.